Is there a TNA spin-off show on the way? The North become the longest reigning champions in Impact Wrestling history, only to lose their titles the following day of that announcement. The contract status of Diona Perrazzo, EC3, and a really, really dumb, one of the dumbest comments I've ever read about Impact Wrestling. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. You want a star, but you've got the star, the sun. And just like the sun, everything revolves around me. You're listening to Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin. And this is your boy, Hakeem Zayn, a.k.a. Rohit Raju. Hey folks, welcome to the show. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. Access TV is very high on the idea of a potential TNA spinoff show, which is exciting news. Exciting news. I know there's a lot of people out there that have been asking uh, whether or not we're going to get a separate show. And this, it's, it seems like, it seems like, you know, this is the closest that um, that we've been so far. Uh, Access TV, like I said, are very high on the idea. Moose is doing a great job as a TNA World Champion, or the self-proclaimed TNA World Champion. And this would be a great opportunity for, for other wrestlers as well uh, that's... that's Impact Wrestling may be looking to sign uh, to fill out that roster because, you know, I, I I would imagine that if they do have a spinoff show, I don't know how long it would be. There's no details on that. Uh, but I, I don't think they would just use wrestlers from Impact Wrestling uh, on this TNA show. I, I think they would sign some new guys to be there, like like an Aiden Prince or an El Reverso or, or um, some other talent to show up. Uh, some talent might move over, like you might see an EC3 moving over to the TNA show. Moose, of course, as a champion, would move over uh, to the TNA show. But um, very exciting news, and, and I'm sure a lot of people are... Um, are, uh, are a little pumped about this because you know it, it, it'd be great to get some more content uh, some more uh, more content more content from Anthem I know we got the two hour Impact Wrestling show uh, Impact Plus uh, to get another uh, net, get another show would be just fantastic now I don't know if they would maybe um, what they could do is Explosion maybe they can make it uh, TNA Explosion something like that you know, just to, and just change the format of Explosion and, and just to make it into a TNA show if we got like an hour of TNA broadcasting just to I would think that they would start like that that they would start with just one, a one hour show just to, to to see what the reaction would be and see what the ratings are uh, and if, if it does um, prove to be a success and um, they could go to a two hour, two hour show uh, but I, I'm all for it I'm all for that I know that um, I was reading that uh, that they contacted Monty Brown Impact Wrestling has co- contacted Monty Brown to possibly come back and I know a few months back Moose was um, was kind of entertaining the idea of a potential move versus Monty Brown match, but uh, apparently Monty Brown is is not interested in in coming back. And yeah, I mean, he's fifty years old. I, I looked it up to see how old he is. He's, he's fifty now, so I I would understand why he wouldn't want to wouldn't, wouldn't want to come back at fifty years old and and take and take uh, some more bumps. I mean, not everybody's Ken Shamrock. Everybody's not in Ken Shamrock shape. Uh, so I mean, Ken Shamrock's gonna be like eighty years old. He'll still be wrestling. <laughs> he'll, still, he'll still be he'll still be diving out of the ring and, and making people tap out tap out with the uh, the ankle lock submission. Uh, but uh, but no, Monty Brown. Not apparently a lot of promoters were trying to get him to come back, but he uh, just not interested. Uh, but you know, hey, I, I I hope they go for it. I hope they go for it. I think like I said, I think the best way for them to go about it, like I said, is is just to change the format of the Explosion Show. Make it into a TNA show, uh, see how it goes, and if all goes well, if the ratings are a success, then maybe you could do uh, a separate TNA show and make it a two-hour show, show it on Thursdays or something. Uh, but um, yeah, 
a lot of potential there. A lot of potential. I'm, 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 I'm for one excited about it. Uh, I, I know initially I wasn't excited about the the whole TNA thing. You know why go back to the past? Uh, but Moose has just completely won me over. Uh, Moose is just fantastic with with that TNA title, and. Right now, he's obviously going to be um, locked in a feud with EC3, which is... And I'm going to talk about EC3 a, a little later. But uh, very, very exciting. Very exciting. And, and and I hope they do it. I hope uh, I hope Access TV and, and Anthem, they um, they uh, pull the trigger on it and uh, we get uh, a separate TNA show. So that's something to keep our eyes on. And um, I'll be checking the news on that. And hopefully, we could get that, that, we could get that soon. So the, the North... The North were on on July twentieth. Yeah, the July twentieth. The North were introduced, not introduced. The, the, they were, the, beca- they became the longest reigning champions in the history of Impact Wrestling. The longest reigning champions in the history of Impact Wrestling on July twentieth, and the very next day, July twenty first, they lost the titles to the Motor City Machine Guns. And sorry to say, but I have a little problem with that. I have a little problem with that. And the problem being this is the North, one of the best tag teams in the world. And Impact Wrestling, they know that they have a special team there. And they 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 want the world to know that the North is one of the best tag teams in the world. And they are impact wrestling tag team champions well they were and they announced them it was a big thing they announced them as the longest reigning champions in the history of impact wrestling nobody held a belt longer than than the north uh, in impact wrestling but on july 21st the motor city machine guns who in their second match back defeat the north and become the new tag team champions so what does this say what does this say? And a lot of people uh, were saying, well, the North are the longest reigning champions because, you know, there's no real competition in Impact Wrestling. And a valid point could be made. A valid point could be made on that. Uh, yes, they defeated LAX. Um, then, you know, TJ, uh, TJP and, and Falaba, they defeated. The, the Dinos were there. Um, Triple XL, they defeated. Uh, so they defeated some, some good teams. But, you know, there is, there is a valid point to be made there that there wasn't, you know, the best competition for, for the North. So, so what happens? So they bring in the Motor City Machine Guns, who answer the Rascals' challenge, and they win the match. They beat the Rascals, and then they get a title shot, on uh, which was uh, last Tuesday, and they go ahead and they defeat the North. So that basically proves the point of everybody that was knocking the North, the knocking the announcement, saying that there was no real competition because the Motor City Machine Guns come in and they defeat the North. The North should not have lost that match. The North should have held the titles for 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 a few more months. A few more months. You don't make the announcement, you know, praising them as the longest reigning champions in the history of Impact Wrestling and then have them lose the following night. It's just, I'm sorry, but that, just, that didn't sit well with me. It didn't sit well with me at all. There's no way they should have lost it. They should have held on to those titles. They should have had a few matches, a series of matches with the Motor City Machine Guns and defeated them every single time just to just to further prove that they're one of the best teams in the world. And then they could have had the big showdown with the Good Brothers. You know, and then the Good Brothers defeat them. And that, you know, I would have been fine with that. But Motor City Machine Guns, they come back. Second night, defeat the North, and the North are no longer champion. It just didn't sit well with me. You know, I don't know how other people feel about it, but you no, know, I just, I just didn't like. It. There's no way the North, the North should have uh, kept the titles. And I, and I, I let Josh Alexander know. I let him know how I feel, and um, you know, he <laughs> about it. So, uh, speaking of Josh Alexander, I have an interview with him coming up, um, scheduled for next week. So I'll be interviewing him uh, next Tuesday, next Tuesday around seven, and uh, that interview will be uh, available later next week. And um, I'm going to talk to him about that uh, and, and, and really go into detail how I feel about them losing to the Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, but, but back to the point I'm trying to make. If you want to build them up as one of the best tag teams in the world, they definitely should have had them beat the Motor City Machine Guns. Unless unless one of the stipulations for the Motor City Machine Guns to, to come back or one of their demands was to win the, the Impact t- Tag Team titles. Uh, but I, I don't think that. I, I don't think that would have been uh, 
one of their one of their demands. Uh, but bottom line, the North should have held on to those titles. They should not have lost. They should have. Uh, you know, if, if the North held on to the titles for another year, I would have been. I would have been totally fine with that. I would have been totally. I know there a lot of people aren't you know fans of the North. Uh, I, I see a lot of people calling them boring, and I don't know how you can call them boring. Every single match that they have is just fantastic. Uh, but but what can you do? Hopefully, uh, they'll get a return match and they'll regain the titles, and uh, they'll um, they'll continue their reign as one of the best tag teams in the world. Because I'm convinced, without a doubt, that they are one of the best tag teams in the world today. So, Diona Perazzo, Diona Perazzo. The Knockouts Women's Champion is wrestling without a contract. She's still working on a per appearance basis, which is a little scary. Which is a little scary because she's the champion right now. They put the belt on her. What if you know she decides that you know what it's not working out here for me? I'm just gonna I'm gonna slip on over to to AEW while she's still the champion. Uh, I don't. I don't. I. I, I could. I would have thought that you know they put the belt on her that she would have been locked up in a contract. But from what I'm reading, no, she's not under contract. She's working on a per appearance basis. Now, the the positive side of that is she has claimed that she's very very happy working uh, with Impact Wrestling. Uh, she said it's been much better than working for the WWE, and hopefully they can work something out and get her under contract. Because like I said, I would hate to see her just show up at AEW one day and you know still the knockouts champion because because that would give Impact Wrestling Trolls a ton of material to work with you would just see days and days of Impact Wrestling Trolls just just going off on Impact Wrestling so hopefully that's something I wouldn't want to see because you know, well I mean if I do see it I'll just I'll just uh, just respond to a lot of them on the show but Impact Wrestling, they, they need to wrap her up. They need to get her tied up to a uh, three-year contract. Two three-year contracts. Just don't let her go. She's so talented. And the match against against Jordan Grace was just fantastic. Dave Meltzer, by the way, gave that match a 2.5 stars. I don't know what, what match Dave Meltzer was watching. I don't know what match he was watching, but that was not a 2.5 star match. That was an incredible match between two great athletes. So Dave Meltzer, take those 2.5 stars elsewhere, okay? Because we're not interested. Okay, I don't know what your issue is with the match, but the match was fantastic. The match was fantastic. So EC3 is back. EC3 is back, and and they're running with a EC3 doesn't work here uh, storyline, apparently. So that that's that's what that's well that's what Josh Matthews was saying that EC three doesn't work here, so so they're running with with that storyline, but the only thing is they're not being consistent with that storyline, you know. For, for one, I'm not I'm not really a, a big fan of the he doesn't work here, you know. Just he works here, okay. Just we signed EC three, you know. He's controlling his narrative, and his narrative has brought him to Impact Wrestling. Nothing wrong with that. So they, I, I kind of just wish they announced that uh, that they have signed him. But but they're going with it. He doesn't work here. The only issue though, the only issue though, is if if EC three doesn't work here, then then how is he getting? You know how is how is uh, Impact Wrestling starting off with a video of EC three? Why is uh, Gia Miller? Who is interviewing Moose points out that there's a ton of new talent, a lot of new talent in Impact Wrestling right now, including EC3 that would be interested in challenging uh, for the TNA title. And Moose responding by Moose responds by saying EC3 is too busy controlling his own his own narrative. You know, Moose didn't say, "Well, no, well, EC3 doesn't work here." Uh, he didn't he didn't use that argument. He just said EC3 is too busy controlling his own narrative. And um, and and why would Gia Miller say you know if EC3 didn't work here why is she saying why is she including him you know in all the the new talent that that has been signed by Impact Wrestling who may be interested in challenging for the TNA title so little inconsistencies there and then then you have Madison Rain saying after 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 EC3 showed up in the ring and and uh, took out Moose. With the inverted uh, DDT, uh, Madison Ray said, "How did he even get in here?" <laughs> well, I'm sure with with the COVID nineteen, I'm sure there's only one way in, one way out, right? And and if 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 EC three is doesn't work here, you know, Tommy Dreamer took a picture of all the the new additions to Impact Wrestling, and they all had the um, 
giving uh, the picture of the finger uh, basically is basically giving the finger to Vince McMahon in front of the Impact Wrestling uh, logo. Um, and EC3 was EC3 was in the picture. So if EC3 doesn't work here, why is he in the picture? So there's all those cons- inconsistencies there. So you're either going to go with it or you're not going to go with it. I personally wouldn't go with it. He doesn't work here. Um, storyline but uh we'll, we'll see how it goes well, well regardless regardless though i'm just happy i'm just happy that ec3 is back with impact wrestling i'm not just happy and i'm really looking forward to his feud with moose it's it's i think it's going to be a fantastic feud and who knows it might carry over to a tna spinoff show so that's uh, something to get very very excited about and you know with the good brothers the, the good brothers uh, let's talk about the 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 additions now the good brothers just you just you can't get better than that and and eric young uh now going to be um you know i thought he'd be feuding with rich swan but it looks like his initial feud is going to be now with uh, eddie edwards uh so um or eddie edwards and rich swan so it's you know a lot of a lot of potential there for for eric young as well um so um very very exciting time for for impact wrestling very very exciting time for impact wrestling so tessa blanchard tessa blanchard uh, apparently was holding up holding up uh, impact wrestling for a large sum of money uh for her to return the the impact wrestling world title which is which is a little disturbing which is a little disturbing uh i know it was initially announced uh, i think it was um on what culture actually bq talked about it uh, what culture uh said it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. that proved to be false uh, bq was able to verify that uh but she was holding up uh she was holding it she did want a sum of money and that's you know you know tessa blanchard you should be ashamed of yourself you should just be absolutely ashamed of yourself uh, for for um for resorting to those tactics you know impact wrestling they they put faith in you uh they made you the first women's world champion first women world champion in the history of professional wrestling they had that much faith in you and you just took it and just threw it back at them and shoved it in their face and and basically you know just didn't mean nothing to you. Didn't mean nothing, and um, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you got after after all that after all that. I'm just I'm glad you're no longer on the Impact Wrestling roster. If you're going to resort to that to those tactics, uh, but it, it's funny though. It's funny though, Tessa Blanchard. Let's let's talk about. It. She's actually rumored to be showing up for um, the WWE Evolution too. Uh, that's the what I've been reading on the internet and the pay per view that's coming up. I think for during SummerSlam or next month or whenever whenever the hell they do it uh, so she's rumored to be on there and and it's funny that if she does show up on that show it's funny how you know she has no issue leaving Mexico to travel uh, for a WWE, WWE show um, to a company that will probably you know won't give her uh, the opportunities that Impact Wrestling gave her uh, to a company that will probably bury her, um, probably make her a jobber in um, in in less than a year. Uh, it'd be interesting. It's interesting that she'll leave Mexico. She'll risk leaving Mexico uh, to go there if she shows up. If the rumors are true, you know. And you know, I I could I'm I could see it happening. I wouldn't put anything past Tessa Blanchard. I wouldn't put anything past Tessa Blanchard. Uh, so um, if she shows up, if she, if she does show up, I'll, I'm gonna be. I'd be. Uh, I'll 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 put it this way. Put it this way. If she shows up for Evolution Two, I'll talk about it on the podcast, and I'll give my uh, I'll give some more of my thoughts on it. So we'll we'll leave it alone for now, and uh, we'll see if she sh- shows up for, for Evolution. Uh, but apparently she's 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 claiming she's claiming that she never asked for any sum of money. Uh, that she, all she was waiting for was an address to send the the belt to. Okay, that's all. She, that's all she was waiting for. So, so I'm sure she requested an address from Impact Wrestling, and they decided, you know, you know, we'll hold off on sending her the address. Yeah, that that sounds uh, that that sounds like the truth to me. I don't know how it sounds to anybody else, <laughs> but anyway, but uh, apparently that the title is being sent back, and um, and uh, hopefully they'll get that that title back soon. But I know they're using the new title anyway, so. I don't know what maybe 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 Moose will claim that title as well and 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 he, and he could be the self-proclaimed TNA champion and the self-proclaimed uh, Impact Wrestling champion uh, only with the older title. So <laughs> sorry, man. That, that's that's just a bad joke. So so let's move along. Let's move along. Uh, 
let's let's move on to one of the dumbest comments. One of the dumbest comments. You know, as, as you know, as you if you've been listening to my podcast, I like to discuss really stupid comments that impact wrestling trolls make. And I actually got one of the dumbest comments ever made, in my opinion. And I'm just gonna pull it up here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read. Okay, so it's there. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh. Just pulling it up here. Okay, so the picture again. This this was a this this was a comment made um, on that Tommy Dreamer picture of all the signings, um, sticking the middle finger up basically to the WWE and Vince McMahon. So one guy comments. He comments. I get that they are pissed, but this is a good way to burn down their bridge back to the WWE. Back to the WWE. Okay, let's stop right there. You know, there's more, more, more. There's more to this comment, but let's stop right there. This is a good way to burn down their bridge back to the WWE. Who, who? First of all, who says that they even want to go back to the WWE? If anyone burned the bridge, the WWE burned the bridge with them. The WWE didn't know how to use these talents properly. The WWE had no idea what to do with EC3, Had really had no idea what to do with, with, with Eric Young. And the Good Brothers, they really didn't know what to do with the Good Brothers. You know, they, yeah, okay, they were aligned with AJ Styles, apparently. Uh, they were in that final Undertaker match. But but comparing the, the Good Brothers when they were in New Japan, they were killers in New Japan, and they were like, I don't know, they, they weren't killers in the WWE, from, from what I understand. So if anyone burnt down the bridge... It was the WWE burnt down the bridge with them. Okay, so let's let well, let's 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 get that clear. Then then this guy says they are all ungrateful. Ungrateful? What the hell is this guy talking about? What would they be un- possibly ungrateful about? You know. So he goes, but then he tries to explain why they're ungrateful. He goes, yes, it sucked that they were released, but. At least they were still getting paid a lot of money to sit in catering and be used once in a while on main event. Okay, first of all, it's not all about money, okay? Especially with EC3. EC3 is not one just to sit around and collect a paycheck and sit in catering and stuff his face and and hope to get on uh, WWE main events, one of their, like, the C or D shows. That's that's not easy. Three. That's not Eric Young either. Eric Young, forty years old. That's 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 not what he wants, and that's definitely not what the Good Brothers want. So it's just a really dumb. First of all, they have nothing to be ungrateful about. If anyone was ungrateful, it was the WWE being ungrateful to them. You know, not recognizing the talent that they had. So the WWE. So again, this guy hasn't. He hasn't wrong it's the wwe that's being ungrateful to to this group of talent and he goes but vince will but vince probably doesn't care about that and will hire them back anyway no because they're signed with impact wrestling so so vince mcmahon isn't hiring any of these guys back okay so i actually responded and i'm not going to read my response um, I just said, "What do you?" Th-? Well, I'll read a little. I, I said, "What are you talking about? They're ungrateful. They were they were released by the WWE and Impact Wrestling signed them. Not everything is about money." And I went on, you know, saying Vince McMahon, you know, can't hire any of them back. You know, they were with Impact Wrestling. So then this guy responds. He goes, "Well, eventually," and this is what really irritated me. Okay, are you ready for this, guy? Just sit down. I want everyone to sit down for this. Okay, I want you to hold on to your seats for this one. He says, he said. Lewis, eventually Impact will go out of business. <laughs> so after all these signings, after shelling out this huge amount of money for the Good Brothers, and I'm sure a nice quantity of money for Eric Young and EC3 to come back, you know, and the Motor City Machine Guns to come back, he still thinks that Impact Wrestling is eventually going to go out of business. <laughs> he says Impact Wrestling will eventually go out of business and they're all going to beg Vince to hire them back. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's going to happen. I'm sure that's going to happen. And they said they're ungrateful because they all wanted to leave anyway. And they're happy that they got released. Well, that's the one, that's the two truth, two true things that he said. 
Though that's truthful. They all wanted to leave anyway because the WWE weren't using them properly. Even Eric Young. Eric Young did an interview and saying that you know that WWE didn't know how to use them. Well, while they while Triple H used them okay in, in NXT when he came up to the main roster, they had no idea what to do with them. They had no idea what to do with them. I think he called it a broken system, basically. Uh, so yes, so they were very happy that they all wanted to leave. And well, Motor City Machine Guns weren't uh, part of the WWE. Uh, so the Good Brothers. Eric Young, EC3, they all wanted to leave. They all wanted to leave, and they are, they are very happy that they got released because they didn't want to be a part of that broken system anymore. But let's go back to the first line. He says, eventually Impact will go out of business. So let's, let's, let's think, well, what is it going to take? What is it going to take to convince these Impact Wrestling trolls that Impact Wrestling is not going out of business. What is it? Because if all these signings, you know, if all these signings doesn't convince them, if if Impact Wrestling, one of the was the one of the only three main pro wrestling promotions in the United States that are still running shows during this pandemic, you know, Ring of Honor's not running shows, Major League Wrestling's not running shows. It's just WWE, AEW, and Impact. They're all running new shows. If if that doesn't convince them, if if the tremendous buy rates for Slammiversary uh, and all the buzz around it, uh, the, the potential TNA spinoff show, if that doesn't convince them that Impact Wrestling is not going out of business, then nothing will. I mean, these guys, 20 years from now, 20 years from now, there's going to be a pay, Impact Wrestling pay-per-view that's going to have like um, a not-so-great buy rate. And so these people are going to be saying, oh, this is the final nail in the coffin. This is it. This is it. You know, been saying this for, for 35 years. This has got to be the final nail in the coffin. They're going out of business. Their, their buy rate, they were expecting They were expecting 1.5 million buys, and they only got 1.1 million buys. So that's the final nail in the coffin. That's it. It's done. It's over. It's <laughs> It's just so stupid. There's nothing is going to convince them otherwise. Nothing is going to convince them otherwise that Impact Wrestling is not going out of business. And and, and the, the fact of the matter is Impact Wrestling is not going out of business. Case closed. So when you think about these Impact Wrestling trolls, that picture with Tommy Dreamer. A picture that Tommy Dreamer took with the Motor City Machine Guns, uh, with Eric Young, with EC3, and with the Good Brothers, where they're all holding up the middle fingers. That is not, not that that was meant for Vince McMahon, and that was meant for the WWE. But you know, I'm also gonna say, you know, from me that those middle fingers were also for all you Impact Wrestling trolls who think that Impact Wrestling is going out of business and. I'm sticking my finger up right now as well to you. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today. My name is Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.